So we are back to the Tales and Adventures of Fife. This is part five of the ongoing series, and I'm going to apologise now for last week. I unfortunately had an accident to expect me being in hospital on the Wednesday, and out of commission on the Tuesday and Thursday. Unfortunately, I was back at work, so I did not have the time to upload or make content, causing the content to be pushed back a week to today. So... Thank you for people who've waited. I know sometimes you wait a week, it can. Maybe we lose interest in content, so people who suck around, I do thank you. And now we'll start the story. Our party set off knowing they had to hunt the Hammer of Glory and the Amulet of Justice. We did not know what Amulet was. Nobody does, it's a myth. It's an item which appears in paintings across culture. You just don't know who had it last, but it all just pops up now that in books and mentions folk tales, songs back from bards. So for the amulet, they knew we had to do some research. But we knew the hammer was north, in the highlands, so that is where they went. As I mentioned last episode, we bumped into a child on the road. The child was hidden amongst an upturned cart. Vanadar and Keo were instantly went maternal, seeing the child in distress, and he went over. Like a skittish cat, the child jumped backwards to hide more under the cart into the shadows. Vanadar and Keo in unison asked if she was okay. Clearly, she went through some trauma. After a few successful persuasion checks, and some good rolls in general, the child came out slightly, out of the shadows, and with the promise of warm food and safety, the child came out. What is your name? Vandar asked. The child responded with the pitiful Sarah. Sarah was covered in blood, mud, there was grit and Bedded it into her knees and skin where she's crawled across the floor to, to safety and leave the cart. Kaylin gave her a quick clean with that was one spell I can never pronounce and we'll try right now. Persdigitation. That's not too bad. And the mud and blood were gone. The grit was gone and the clothes seemed cleaner. And Sarah was more comfortable about herself now. We offered her her lift into town and she... Happily accepted. This was their time to try and find out what happened and try and find her parents. Sarah was quiet for a while. Not answering the questions because she didn't want to answer. She was still ex processing and accepting what happened. But when she was ready, she spoke. Well, me and mum, he was making milk and butter. The chilly thing. And they were shouting and screaming. Farm hands uh, ran in, covered in blood, arrows sticking out back. She gestured to her back as she said that. My mother grabbed me straight away, picked me off the ground, put me on the cart for the horses, who was going to use me to the market today, shouting for my daddy to come over. He came with his, with his sword, his sword he never uses, and he moved the wagon into the courtyard. Shouting, anyone to Jabon who can. And he went off. There was mean people coming on horses. Bows and spears. With pointy ears. And dark skin. Vandal and Kayron had a rough idea what this meant. They'd both been through these lands for different reasons. Kayron used to be part of a mercenary band. Doing odd jobs. And part of Vandar's training was guard work, patrolling lands. She's heard of the movements of the drow in this area. They've came through, really, but they have known to be in this area. Sarah looked at them. So then we got onto the road, and we thought we had escaped. Then the bad men and horses came. And she stopped talking. 
She didn't see them all. The party kind of figured out what happened. The drow attacked the horses, killing them instantly. The bodies go in slump, the cart lurched forward and flipped, sending Sir flying, and the cart landed on top of her. Somehow, she was safe. Seeing fate was not there for the parents. They watched them get attacked, and then bodies go slump and dragged away. She said this in bouts of conversations over the next 10 minutes as she still tried to process what happened. The party decided to go towards safety. On the way, they stumbled on the off-road leading to Sarah's house. So they decided to investigate, see if they could find any tracks or trails. Anything they could get to help out and get payback for Sarah's family. When we pulled the car to over, Kaylin summoned her familiar, a small but playful raven. Good old Branwen. Branwen has been a staple of the story in uses for keeping people happy and merry. And Kaylin is going to continue to do this. With this more child Sarah praying with the raven safely in the wagon and we can explore the household and we did we slowly looked around the courtyard noticing that when he was attacked it was in the middle of the day of course we knew it was middle of the day but investigation checks didn't do well but mother looked to realise there was caught off guard and it was middle of preparing for the market. Milk was upturned and spilt into the ground. Sarah did cry at this milk. But she never cried over spilt milk. And they couldn't find much. They found a few arrows embedded into the wood. But Kieran went into the main barn. Trying to find any clue to if what they've been taking. But she did not expect what she saw. She saw a man hanging by the leg from the ceiling, completely filleted, missing of all skin. And as she was cutting the rope down to give a proper burial for the body later, she heard a happy smile whistle from Sarah. As Sarah Went to see what Kieran was doing. He was like, hey Kieran. Instantly she turned around. And she turned Sarah around. And pushed her out of the door. Getting Bramwen to be more energetic and playful. Than he was previously. He got. Her attention. Exactly how Kieran wanted. And this is where Kieran got the party together. To discuss what she found. As he was cutting the body down. They heard a whimper from the side of the room. Weapons drawing, they couldn't even place where it was. They heard it, but couldn't quite work out. As the investigation of checks failed them. But what didn't fail them? As anyone who can realise this, an arrow coming from that corner into your chest is definitely not a friendly. As a drow, Fired its longbow, coated in poison, jumping out of the shadows, and used this moment to flee. Combat broke out, Vandar instantly rushing forward to deal with it. Kaelin retreated backwards, hands up, ready to cast out blast. Banjovi, he took out a spear that was embedded in the, in the war. And wanted to give us back with a good old yeet. So combat's begun. Blows were exchanged. Shields were raised. Blows were parried and counted. And the combat was a slugfest. Each one of the members being afflicted with poison on occasions. The drow managed to escape. Grabbing Sarah as he ran. 
no one was happy about this. Banadar managed to keep up, but Kaelin, with cool and collect, fired Elish Blasters at a distance, knocking him down to low health. And Banjovi kept his word. He was using the spear. He imbued it with magical power. He threw it, impaling him in the back with such force and impact, he went flying ten feet. And he just happily said, Here, have your spear back. Now they've checked over the courtyard to make sure that there's no more enemies hidden behind. They grabbed Sarah's toys and clothes. As now they went for safety. And they knew there was a village up ahead. But while doing so, they followed and tracked the trails leading to the road. Just in case we could find anything to help them and get back to Sarah's parents. Bajeri prepared the cart and Vandar did a quick ceremonial for the body they found. Buried it and did some prayers. It was then full sailing. No encounters. And the sun even came out. It stopped being miserable and grey. It would have been a nice ride, despite what's happened. A child now had been potentially orphaned, and she even watched the trauma that happened in front of her. But this was going to be the everyday life now, until Zorgafax was beaten, and peace could return to the kingdom of life. Especially with a drought caught on the loose. They just need to find where they were and deal with them sooner and better. Party aware there is drow bandits in the area. There was all ever so vigilant and watchers as he went down these roads. They knew roughly there was a village coming up from the signs. But there was other signs on the ground, horse tracks going towards the village. The party was concerned that the village had also been attacked. So they went on. An hour passed. Two hours passed. The village was a lot further than they expected. They came to a crossroads and saw the tracks they had been following on the way to the village turned left and went to the forest. And this is where they had to make a decision. Hunt down the drow while the trail was hot and risk Sarah's life or went to the village and keep Sarah safe. So, with Vandar being a paladin and her oaths dictated that she must protect the weak. So, that's what they did. They went to the village and... It took them like an hour and a half of harsh roads. And then, when they arrived, they needed to find someone to look after so someone they could trust. Unfortunately, they did not know this town. So, they had a drink and planned to essentially pay for the room for her for the night, and the next few nights, after the money they've gotten from in the nest. But they was fortunate. They found an old holy building ran by a retired cleric. The cleric saw their plight and offered to personally look after her. And this felt them with glee as they can finally feel safe that she is safe and they can get revenge for her. So they said they went back to the room they hired and had long rests. Morning came, hot grub in the belly, they set out to the forest, hoping to find the drow that kidnapped <coughs> and plundered and pillaged the local area. Word got out what they were planning to do, and the guards came up to him. Warning them not to go. 
giving them cautiously tales of what's happened. Not having any of it, they still set off. So the town guard's captain came to them and was honest. There was a court that had a base in the forest. It was kept in line when King Angus V ruled the lands. But now he isn't to be trying guard anymore. All the resources to keep that court in line and keep numbers low. But now it's run rampant. They've taken back their old headquarters and they're expanding out. Rumours are that they have joined Zargothax as men with his sigil have seen entered the forest. But they knew no matter what it was the right thing to go in. And the rampant mountain jick of this forest is going to be havoc. They're going to twist and manipulate their senses. But they did not know about this. They just assumed it was a forest. Little did they know that this was going to be the biggest challenge they have faced yet. And we will face for a while. Well, that was the news part of the series. Hope you people enjoyed it as always. Leave a like if you did. If you hated it and think I should stop, comment. Hit feeds the algorithm. All comments are good comments in my eyes. As always, hope your game sessions are long and your crits are plenty. It's been Gandhi as always. See you on the next one.